Good evening, everyone, um, and thank you for being on this uh, on this panel. Um, it is my pleasure to introduce uh, Amy Lancy, uh, EDP Commerce Practice Lead of North America Publicis Group, and Heather Oshie of the Marketing Science Lead of SNAP. They will be talking to us about a, a very exciting topic about how augmented reality influences purchase. I, I think I, I don't want to spend too much time um, talking about this. The research speaks for itself. I think the one thing that I uh, would like to think about uh, is that Tim Cook once said that uh, one day augmented reality will be as important to us as eating three meals a day. I'm not quite sure we're there yet, but definitely uh, we know that the pandemic has changed the way we shop and it's accelerated uh, the way technology has influenced our lives. So this piece of research definitely um, is going to make us uh, pop up and really think about how, how that has changed things. So I turn the floor over to Amy and to Heather. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Great, well, thank you everyone. Uh, we're really excited to share this research with you today and to talk about augmented reality. Um, and thank you, Melissa, for the introduction. Um, I'll just quickly say that I lead uh, Global Ad Research and Insights at SNAP. Our team conducts research to uncover the truths of advertising efficacy so we can surface actionable insights for brands. And um, Amy, would you like to just share uh, a quick? Sure. Hi, okay. Amy Lansky. Nice to see everyone. Uh, my role in Publicis Group is leading our commerce practice. That means working with our partners like SNAP in terms of how we understand how we can intersect with consumers and figure out how we can make them fall in love with our brands and maybe buy more of them. So thrilled to be here today. Cool. Well, I'd start by just giving a, an overview of the camera. Um, and at Snapchat, we describe ourselves as a camera company. Um, and it's important to realize that the camera is no longer just a piece of hardware or um, you know, a physical object used to commemorate your special moments and just to take pictures, it's really evolved into a powerful software that can unlock the ability to connect digital experiences with the physical world, like you and everyone and everything around you. Just like having a digital and mobile strategy was necessary to evolve with the changes in behaviors over the last 10 years, we truly believe that every business needs a camera strategy to evolve with the next behavior shift that's already upon us. And we'll share that with you today. So not only are we the most used camera in the world, we're also the largest augmented reality platform. Over 75% of our users engage with augmented reality on Snapchat every day. Um, at Snapchat, we've evolved not only to bring joy and fun to the camera, but helpful experiences that, um, you know, that, I, that I have here, such as being able to identify a dog um, or even plants and other animals uh, to do your math for you. And um, one of our salespeople's son was doing this and the teacher had to say no camera math <laughs> on all the tests. Um, and one of the most important um, areas of investment for us have been AR shopping. So I'm going to hand it over to Amy to share some examples of how we've partnered with Publicis um, for AR shopping specifically. Great, I love the camera math story. Okay, so one of my roles again is working with our clients in terms of how we are bringing new technologies or leveraging technologies like AR with Snap. And during COVID, of course, I heard that mentioned in the previous session, there were a ton of opportunities and interest from our clients to test and learn. So there are two featured here that happened during COVID knowing that we had so many consumers that were in lockdown. The first is Sally Hansen on the left for you guys that are big nail people like myself. Uh, they launched a new miracle gel collection right in the height of COVID, which is probably not optimal when people aren't going to stores. So in order to maintain the momentum in their category leadership, we partnered with staff to really 
figure out how we could test and learn around consumers trying on five different colors of this new product, the new Sally Hansen product. It was a first to market innovation. So it's basically a virtual try on technology that allowed you to seamlessly move from this AR experience into being able to buy your favorite color at Ulta.com. It was a huge success for Sally Hansen and also a great way for us to really start to understand how consumers behave within Snap when we're wanting to make them to actually move from intent to purchase. Then on the right side, similar story here is with our um, great partners at Kohl's. And Kohl's, of course, had a new athleisure line that they, of course, wanted consumers to really buy during a time when everyone's staying at home and athleisure became much more important. And so, again, still had that uh, sort of the hindrance of not being able to go to a physical store. So this essentially ena enabled consumers to be able to, again, use, our, use this AR technology to be able to go through a virtual closet and look at all the different looks and be able to seamlessly click through to the Kohl's ecosystem to buy. Okay, so we partnered with the research firm Alter Agents to conduct a three-part research study across the US, the UK, France, and Saudi Arabia. We wanted to dive into this more and truly quantify the learnings. And what they did was they interviewed augmented reality experts, they conducted mobile ethnographies during the holiday shopping season, and they ran a quantitative survey. Through this analysis, we've uncovered these three consumer truths, which we'll share in more detail. So I'll just hop right into them in the interest of time. So across the four markets measured, we learned that more than half of people age 13 to 49 and nearly a third of people overall claim to have used augmented reality in the past. But in all reality, these numbers are likely understated as we actually showed people different types of augmented reality and uh, there wasn't as much high agreement that people believe those were actually augmented realities. So only four in 10 people associate filters and lenses on social as augmented reality when indeed they are. And while the global pandemic may have contributed to accelerated branded uh, augmented reality adoption, this behavior is here to stay. More than three in four of all consumers believe augmented re reality technology will play a role in how they shop in the next five years. Using augmented reality for shopping is where technology becomes real, actually, for all ages. Um, you know, Gen Z already has high use of augmented reality and branded AR, and thus engaging them will be critical for adoption, discoverability, and sharing. Think of, uh, you know, teens sharing with their parents and getting them excited about it. But what was interesting was that we found that millennial and Gen X consumers have a strong affinity for branded AR experiences, meaning that they have even higher interest in branded AR, a higher likelihood to purchase after using augmented reality experiences. So developing assets that are meant to be engaged with across generations can expand the opportunity associated with this technology. And augmented reality isn't purely fit for one category or one type of purchase cycle either. The purchase journey for home furnishings quite differ from that of uh, entertainment or clothing, but you can see that they occupy the top five categories. Um, and that's really just where the technology has been developed to date. So we truly believe that if you build it and build it well, uh, they will come as long as they can find it. And speaking of finding augmented reality, um, surprisingly, more than half of consumers are actively seeking augmented reality experiences with social like Snapchat driving that behavior, uh, people going into the lenses carousel and looking for those brand experiences. This built in behavior creates an opportunity for brands to increase their chances of being discovered by owning their uh, share of voice within the camera and starting to think about it that way. Um, consumers want to show and share AR experiences with their friends and family, including branded ones. Just like how we love to shop with our friends in person, how, why couldn't we do that over our phones? Brands can seize on these behaviors and increase discoverability by promoting and advertising unique augmented reality experiences. And because we found that shareability and sociability were found to heighten um, augmented reality's impact, 
brands should create AR experiences with the intent of them being shared. Great. I think is our video going to play of our millennial? Should you want me to kick off with the video? Please. Sure. Let's see. So this AR experience was through Snapchat looking at the Starbucks lens. It was actually pretty cool because I've actually seen something very similar to other lenses out there through Snapchat. But what really caught my attention was seeing how I had the glasses on, Starbucks logo, leaves falling. Very cool. But honestly, I was just looking at the logo too, or in the top left quarter, corner, it said uh, Starbucks uh, pumpkin cold brew, very cool. And then I decided to actually flip the lens on the other way, and I was able to see an image of that, and you can actually see the drink, very realistic. And so I went back to the front facing view, which was on my cell, I hit shop now, brought up the app, and in this occasion, what I would do is that, if I was in the mood for a drink, I would place the order and pick it up at Starbucks. So I feel like, you know, if I had a thirst for something or I was craving something from Starbucks, this would actually make me gravitate to, to possibly or, uh, ordering a drink. There's no hiccups, no confusions, no issues whatsoever. Um, I do think that I would use this because I have seen other apps like this all the time too. But what I also like to do is maybe just uh, take a picture of myself and send it through Snapchat to let's say my friend, a family member, for them to see it. And you know, sometimes they might get like a, a laugh out of it. Sometimes, you know, they might comment on it. So I feel like, you know, this is a cool experience because I love Snapchat. It's one of my favorite apps to use. And it's very <laughs> interactive, especially with AR experience. Thank you. Why I love our millennial experience is it articulates everything that Heather just said, which is brands need to be thinking about how they're playing in this space. He talked a lot about how he was engaged. He was looking for the logo. He was discovered there was a new pumpkin opportunity, and he was also going to share it with his friends, and it was going to make him make the decision to purchase. So when we think about branded AR experiences, they will convert to a purchase. Um, in our study, we uncovered that the vast majority of respondents, 66%, were more likely to purchase after a branded AR experience like our millennial here. And they believe it'll play a key role in shopping in the future because they're getting much more comfortable with this type of engagement. And in fact, they're going to be expecting it. So brands of the future need to be able to seamlessly move someone from being able to move from discovery and surprise and delight to be able to making a purchase. 90% of the campaigns drove an increase in ad awareness in terms of a snap beta test they did with shoppable AR formats. So we believe that this is here to stay and it's a really interesting place for brands to play. So getting into a little bit more in terms of how this can play a role throughout the purchase journey. Um, everyone has a camera on their phone that can easily connect with AR technology. And as mentioned earlier, your camera can solve math problems. And it, in addition, it can reduce a number of, of friction points in shopping, like we saw with that nail example or the or the Kohl's example. So being able to deliver this, deliver this organically in social environments that is not disruptive, but feels very organic is really what we think is the future in terms of how consumers are expecting to experience brands and to be able to shop. So you pair this technology with the, the ability to be able to create you know, consumer connections around those different need states. You know, so whether it's buying new nail polish or a new athleisure outfit or exploring opportunities for your home, uh, this is a technology that we know is here to stay. I think we ran out of time. We could go on forever, we ran out of time. Yeah, I know, it's so interesting. I, I think uh, we just went a little bit over time, but I think that's a great segue to some amazing so some questions. And what I'd love to ask you now is what categories do you think this would really play into? Um, you know, sure. more retail, CPG, automotive, for example. Yeah, I can start with that. I mean, for us, as I, you know, beauty and clear, E-commerce in general for beauty has been a category that has exploded and has grown much faster. So that's the natural place to start. Plus there's a fun engagement quality to it. Uh, also retail, as we saw with Kohl's, I think now, especially with the focus on home, this idea of how these things come to life in your own home, in your home environment is really where we're going to see more and more adoption on those um, opportunities that are more of a higher considered purchase. But consumers are much more, you know, a, 
adept at being able to use these experiences and sort of make them their own. So that will get us get us out of like the low intent purchases into some of the things that are more expensive. And of course, Heather, I'll let you talk a little bit more about auto. Maybe you were going there as well. And yeah. Yeah, certainly. I, I think, you know, there's clearly what we saw from the ability to um, personalize, to demonstrate things in front of you. And as we've seen that there is this higher affinity for millennials, for Gen X, and um, potentially even older generations. Uh, this is where some of those higher, uh, higher, longer purchase cycle, higher uh, price points will start to uh, play an even greater role in the future. And I'll add one more point that was on the last slide that we didn't present, but like this idea of using this virtual space to get over some legacy sort of brick and mortar or things like auto where you can't control the end-to-end -end experience, at least in the US, mm -hmm. is a really interesting place so that you're creating this third space for your brand to live that's not wedded on whether you have a physical display or you're able to control perhaps the dealer environment in, in the US where this really becomes really interesting for brands to bring together what they want the full experience to be. Super. Now, as you were as you were doing the research, was there anything in particular that you know surprised you, you know, when you uncovered these things, or did anything did anything change your mind about AI in particular? Heather, I'll let you start. Yeah, I I was really surprised at um, shopping and you know the the true opportunity to improve the commerce experience. Uh, went beyond Gen Z to millennials and Gen Xers. And it really shown in the mobile ethnographies where they were trying out these, uh, you know, using various retailers or, and their apps or you're doing it through social, um, but just how excited they were and thinking about all of the possibilities. So that was one. Um, the other was the opportunity beyond purchase and the post-purchase um, opportunity that we uncovered in that, you could, uh, you know, pull up instructions for a more of a complicated, um, you know, home product that you need to build, and it will give you more detailed instructions with the product right in front of you. Um, so there were some some really interesting applications coming out of that that um, we were able to to confirm and learn more about. Yeah, I everything that Heather said, and I would say that I think I was a little surprised that the intent was so high in terms of being able to get consumers to actually buy versus being able to discover. Um, you know, I think we come at this with a little bit of a perspective on how consumers probably want to use certain retail channels, et cetera, to be able to make their purchases at times. And, you know, Snap tends to be much more in that discovery fun phase. But and, uh, definitely across segments, 100%, this is something that consumers are ready to do. So we as brand builders need to think about how we want to be where they are already. Amazing. Now, are there, I'm sure that it's not just me who has uh, like super interested in these, uh, in this category and what's happening in technology, but are there questions from the floor? Would you like to you know, ask the speakers about their experiences and what they're seeing? A few more minutes, a few more seconds left. If not, we also have meet the speakers so that you could ask um, the speakers about their experiences in the research. There's also like things that you, what you've spoken about are things that we've learned from the successes of the case studies that we've seen. Are there things to, to not learn from? What are some, you've, you've, you've shown us some, you've talked about some case studies with successes. What are some yeah. things not to do? Yeah, we did ask about, um, you know, what are what are some of the things that might turn people away or bad experiences that, that they've had, and um, the top two was that it would appear cartoony, like it was hand drawn versus the real product, um, or that it was glitchy. And in speaking with the experts and and those who have you know PhDs and are very focused on this technology. Um, one of those experts highlighted these pitfalls and said that, you know, if people come across a glitchy AR experience, chances are that they will not try it again. And in his past, um, you know, experience, he's seen this with many augmented reality apps that weren't really ready for prime time. And it reflect reflected pretty 
poorly on the company. So that's where, you know, Snap has uh, our Lens Studio. You can work with our creators and our um, creative strategy team to ensure that that uh, glitchiness is not something they'd have to <laughs> worry about, but, but certainly something to keep in mind. And I guess for me, this is with most of our clients, we think about commerce opportunities, especially in emerging spaces like this, the infrastructure has to be there. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have the right backend, you, you need to be prepared to have that because you still have to fill the products. And there's that customer service component that's so important that sometimes we get so excited about testing and learning, we forget about being able to deliver a seamless customer experience. Um, so making sure that you have those fundamentals in place. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Heather. Yeah. I'm so sorry, but the time is up. But we do have a Meet the Speakers uh, session shortly. So um, here's, I'm sorry I couldn't call on you, but please join us later. And I hope that we can entertain your question later. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you so much, ladies. I think that was an amazing presentation. And I agree with Amy, your last point. I think what you know, you guys have presented here is that you have the, the augmented reality technology advancing as well as this whole direct to consumer e commerce growth and the combination of those two things um, and having a seamless way to just buy products based on the experience is going to be really the accelerator here. Mm -hmm.